I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bummer here again for JoeBlow.com with another Best Movie You Never Saw. And this week we're taking a look at 1993's Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, starring Jason Scott Lee, no relation, as Bruce Lee, Lauren Holly, Robert Wagner, and it's directed by Rob Cohen, the man who gave us the Fast and Furious series. On the run from the law, martial artist Bruce Lee travels to San Francisco where his kung fu prowess leads him to opening a school, meeting the love of his life, and eventual big screen immortality. Now, in the early 90s, the cult of Bruce Lee was running at a fever pitch. His movies were perennial favorites on VHS, and spooky documentaries about his death, such as The Curse of the Dragon, were all the rage. People loved and respected him, with his son Brandon Lee on the cusp of big screen immortality of his own, thanks to a well-received star turn in Rapid Fire. When the big screen American biopic was announced, Brandon Lee himself was actually approached to take on the part, but he wisely turned it down to do his own thing. He still gave the film his blessing though, and eventually American Jason Scott Lee was cast in the part despite having no formal martial arts training. Jason Scott Lee actually talked about meeting Brandon Lee before they started shooting, saying, I met him before I started the project. We had dinner together and sat and talked as an offering of respect. Getting Brandon's seal of approval for playing his father was important. It was really nice meeting him and sad and tragic how he left us. Indeed, less than two months before the film opened, Brandon Lee died in a freak accident of his own on the set of The Crow, suddenly making the film's climax, where his father battles a ghost for the soul of his son, cringeworthy. Yet Universal, with the encouragement of Lee's family it should be added, pushed on and Dragon the Bruce Lee story was a modest success. Yet in the years since, the film is often dismissed as Hollywood hokum, making it ripe for rediscovery. Now, if you're looking for a factual Bruce Lee biopic, Dragon the Bruce Lee story is not the one. I actually don't think people want a factual Bruce Lee story at this point. Just look at the way that people reacted when Mike Moe portrayed him as anything less than perfect in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. People want the idealized version of Bruce Lee on the big screen. Thus, if you were to make a big screen biopic, I really think the only option you'd have at this point would be to make another Dragon the Bruce Lee story. Indeed, this really is not your typical biopic. Rather than an accurate account of his life and times, Dragon plays out as a romantic action story with enough set pieces and kung fu treachery to account for the fact that it's maybe the only big screen biography ever to get a Sega Genesis tie-in video game. There's nothing realistic about it whatsoever, with Jason Scott Lee's Bruce Lee mixing it up in epic kung fu battles at the slightest provocation, complete with Bruce Lee Enter the Dragon style catcalls and yells. In fact, Dragon also started the urban legend that Bruce Lee was briefly crippled during an underground battle, the reality of which he faced off with Wan Jack Man in a courtly demo that didn't leave either man particularly worse for wear, and in fact was turned into a movie its own called The Birth of the Dragon, although I don't recommend that anybody see it because it's actually not a very good movie at all. Here, Bruce Lee fights a hulking opponent who has no resemblance whatsoever to Wong Jack Man and winds up crippled. He then recovers and has a victorious rematch and then faces off with his vengeful brother in a fight to the death on the set of The Big Boss. It's really silly, but you know what? It's also very entertaining, and the movie plays right into the mystery of his death, with Lee being chased around by literal demons throughout, with the finale a battle royale on the set of Enter the Dragon. Now, the reality of Lee's death was actually a lot more routine. So, if you're looking for a warts and all realistic account of Bruce Lee's life and times, Dragon the Bruce Lee story ain't it. This is very much one of those print the legend biopics. All that said, it's one of the better American martial arts films of the era. For one thing, it's also the rare Hollywood film with an Asian lead. It's funny how in 1993 an Asian actor could be the lead in a Bruce Lee biopic, but by 2017 he was turned into a supporting character in Birth of the Dragon. This, undoubtedly, is not progress. Jason Scott Lee, while not resembling Bruce Lee in the slightest, except for the fact that they're both Asian, is a charismatic hero, and despite a lack of martial arts training, he moves well. I'm actually kind of surprised that didn't make him into a bigger star. I mean, he's a great looking guy, he's charismatic, and he was really good in Steven Sommer's Indiana Jones style riff on The Jungle Book. Lauren Holly also, it should be said, is gorgeous and likable as his future wife, Linda, and the two have really good chemistry, making the love story a very easy sell. If Dragon has one major asset though that can't be denied, it's the fact that it boasts one of the best scores of its era. Randy Edelman's classic soundtrack, the theme of which wound up being a staple of 1990s trailers, is all over this film, and it's really good. <laughs> Come <laughs>
Edelman and director Rob Cohen would reteam three years later for another Dragon movie, Dragonheart, which would feature another classic score even though the film wasn't great despite Sean Connery voicing a dragon. I mean, Dennis Quaid is a medieval knight? Uh, I don't think it was a great idea there, folks. It seems you people are in need of a dragon slayer. Where is the Lord responsible for this village? Now, if we're talking about best scenes, my favorite scene is probably the biggest bullshit scene in the movie. Apparently the shoot of the big boss was pretty rough on Bruce Lee thanks to his frequent clashes with director Lo Wei. However, I doubt it was ever quite this bad with Lee Shown fighting for his life on the ice factory set against an opponent that's bent on vengeance, who he finishes off in a classic Enter the Dragon style move. <laughs> I mean, it's not very realistic, people, but you know what? It's pretty fun, and I have to say I'm impressed that Jason Scott Lee was able to pull it off so well considering he had no real martial arts training. I mean, the guy could move. If you want to see Dragon the Bruce Lee story, it's actually pretty easy to find out there due to it being something of a cult hit. It's out on DVD and Blu-ray, and it's also available on iTunes and Google Play. If you happen to be rubbed the wrong way by Once Upon a Time in Hollywood's depiction of Bruce Lee, this movie in some ways may be the tonic to you, but don't fool yourself. It's no more realistic than that film. That said, Bruce Lee is a legend, so making a movie about the legend may be not the worst decision. While only a shade more realistic than an actual Bruce Lee movie, Dragon the Bruce Lee Story is something of a classic, especially in the pantheon of American martial arts movies, and it's one of director Rob Cohen's better films. I'm pretty fond of this one, and if you could suspend disbelief, you'll find it to be a pretty good yarn, and I think it's a movie that deserves to be more well known. I'm sure that there's a lot of readers who are going to know this movie very well, and I'm sure that if you were born around the same time I was, you grew up watching it. That said, I would wager that our younger viewers have not seen it, and maybe, and shockingly enough, might have only actually heard of Bruce Lee after seeing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, if for some reason you've only just now heard of Bruce Lee, here's my recommendation. You watch all the Bruce Lee movies. You go back, you watch a little bit of Green Hornet, you see how he was kind of wasted in Hollywood. Then you watch Dragon the Bruce Lee story, feel great about yourself, and then read some actual books about Bruce Lee. Avoid all those cheap knockoff documentaries about his death. Bruce Lee is an icon, he was a great man, one of the greatest martial artists and one of the greatest movie stars of all time. He deserves to be celebrated, and I have to say, Dragon the Bruce Lee story is an excellent celebration of his legend. Until next time, I'm Chris Bumbray for JoeBlow.com.